Mike Shoe Smith, what do you think about all this? Well, it's an amazing deja vu uh, feeling I got when, as I watch all of this, Carl. Uh, by the way, I wasn't surprised to hear the comments by John McCain uh, because um, he seems to be complicit in everything that the Obama nation is doing for, out of the White House. You know, I wrote a book back in 2009 called Politics as Usual where I documented evidence that uh, John McCain took a die for Obama in the election in 2008. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Do you remember was, when was, he was doing that town hall meeting and and some woman stood up and started talking about how she feared for our nation if Obama was president and she started quoting from his book and everything? And John McCain jumped on that woman, got in her face in the town hall meeting on television and said, now, 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 we're not going to go there. And then he said, now, you know, Obama, he'll make a really good, he'll make a good president if he wins the election. And he got booed by people in the town hall meeting. He was taking a dive way back then, Mike. Taking a dive. He took a dive, and there's documented evidence. Now, sadly, uh, the book, um, uh, Politics as Usual, is out of print. It's no longer available. If you have a copy of it, you have a collector's item. Uh, the publisher is no longer printing copies. It's over. So uh, uh, I'm not just saying any of this to sell books because there's there's literally none for sale. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, but listen, uh, it was no surprise to hear Mike Bates. Uh, and it's, it's great that he kept that audio because it really does confirm, you know, what I've been saying all along. In fact, uh, when you mentioned in, in the beginning of this segment that, uh, you know, Freedom Friday with Carl Gallup's uh, breaking news, uh, nobody else is talking about it. Well, listen, when I wrote that book, when my book came out, Politics as Usual, where I document evidence that he took a dive for Obama, I was attacked by the, the Mark Levin show. And they invited me to come on his show to debate Mark Levin. Yeah. And I thought, well, golly, like a, Mark Levin is an angry troll. Like, I want to be ambushed by him? I don't think so. Uh, so I declined the offer. Uh, but, uh, you know, the more we look at this stuff, the more we see how, uh, you know, the evidence is bearing itself out. Uh, uh, that uh, John McCain is not to be trusted. And he is a, a uh, you know, one of the many rhinos who pretend to be conservatives, pretend to be men of the people. But really... We have a uniparty in America, don't we? I mean, the Republican Party, they don't care about the Constitution, even down to their own personal eligibility problem. Right. You know, they just don't seem to care. Right, right. Well, and these, and these are the things that you and I have been screaming right here on Freedom Friday for years now. And that is the the it's Congress people you know people get on to me Mike all the time they say you know when is Zulu and and Arpaio going to do something they're they're you know they're dragging their feet they're not doing excuse me. Zulo and Arpaio are involved in a criminal investigation that goes all the way to the White House and beyond. That's going to take some time. We've been telling folks. Right. That's not something right. you just throw out there. This is not tabloid oh. journalism. It's a criminal investigation. But Congress, Congress, it's your congressman's fault, people, yours and mine, all of them, because none of them have done what the Constitution requires in this, Mike. They are required, according to the Constitution, to vet the qualifications of the, peop the, the, the man or woman uh, who is presented to be president and vice president. The Constitution says that. And twice Barack Obama was presented to the Electoral College as the candidate, and twice Congress refused to vet him, and the reason that's so important is because they did vet John McCain. Folks, read Senate Resolution 511. They asked John McCain for to present his birth certificate. Well, if you want, if you guys want to see a, now we're not ready to endorse any candidates right now, but if you want to see a fast track of this, of this, uh, you know, eligibility issue, look at the guy who's running number two in the polls right now, Donald Trump. Right. And Donald Trump it was defended by Joe Arpaio in the headlines this week for his comments on Mexican immigrants. In fact, there's a story today that the guy who's responsible for the recent killings in San Francisco was deported something like seven times, a Mexican illegal immigrant. Right. So uh, Donald Trump, uh, Joe Arpaio have been vindicated on their comments on Mexican immigrants. It's time to put a plug in that giant gaping hole at the border. Right. And, you know, I interviewed uh, Lord Moncton uh, yesterday morning uh, out of England. Um, uh, if you don't know who Lord Moncton is, do some research. Fascinating uh, researcher on global warming, the, the leftist agenda on the gay marriage, et cetera, et cetera. And he has some very interesting things to say about Ted Cruz's eligibility. 
if you want to hear a, a, a truly an intellectual take on on the coming presidential race, the current presidential race for the Republican ticket, go to uh, youtube.com slash P.P. Simmons, the PNN Network. It's an hour and a half long interview with Lord Moncton. Fascinating right. listening. But uh, uh, I want to talk about this uh, briefly, Carl, this whole uh, Supreme Court gay marriage ruling, because the, my take on it is this. They did not give anyone any more rights than they already previously had, okay? Mm -hmm. These men have always had the right to marry in America. As long as you're an adult, you meet the requirements for a marriage license. You, men have always had that right to get married. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court did not give anyone the right to marry. The Supreme Court set themselves up as God by redefining marriage. You know, marriage was defined in the Old Testament as, and, and most religions, by the way, uh, but in the Old Testament as the union between a man and a woman, right, for procreation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It, was, it, was it was a binding contract between a man and a woman to, uh, you know, it was a family ordeal, right? And uh, Jesus confirmed this when he was asked about marriage and divorce. He said, uh, look, uh, didn't, haven't you read that, that uh, uh, a man shall leave his, his, his uh, family and cleave to his wife? and the two shall become one flesh. Jesus defined marriage very clearly as the union between a man and a woman. Jesus did not have to mention homosexuality or, or bestiality or pedophilia or incest. He just covered the whole topic by saying, look, marriage is between a man and a woman, end of story. So Jesus is God. The Old Testament is, uh, is, a, is, the, is the history of God's interaction with humanity, where God himself declares that marriage between a man and a woman. The Supreme Court, what they did, they did not give men and women the right to marry, whether it's same-sex marriage or any other. What they did was redefine marriage. Right. That's all they've done here. And it's basically, you know, that may be oversimplifying it in some people's minds, but at the end of the day, they have set themselves up as God, saying Jesus is wrong. Right. Marriage is not between a man and a woman. Marriage is, is the uh, the union between any two people. You know, whether it's now we're seeing uh, uh, a woman, a man is going to marry his biological daughter and move to New Jersey now. We're seeing, uh, a man in Montana who's going to uh, keep his wife and also marry his girlfriend now. Uh, you know, this has opened the floodgates to all manner of perversity. And uh, what the Supreme Court has done is basically they've fallen, lo fallen in lockstep with the Antichrist spirit. You know, Christ did define marriage. The Antichrist spirit is saying, no, Jesus is wrong. Marriage is not between a man and a woman. Marriage is can be really whatever two consenting adults want to call it. Right, right. Well, you're absolutely right. And now we've got articles coming out about the the the, the uh, pedophiles, uh, the 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 man boy love association, and all of that. They're they're in they're in articles in newspapers and on the internet across the world now saying. In America, they're promoting that agenda of adults marrying children because the Supreme Court decision has the wording in there. You know, you should be able to marry who you love, and it's none of, nobody's business, et cetera, et cetera. And they're going to use the same tact. They're, they're talking about it. They're bragging about it. We're going to use the same rationale right. to institute right. adults marrying children. How godless is that? That's almost like Islam, if you will. Uh, <laughs> let me. And, yes. and, but, but here's the thing, folks. You heard it right here, probably breaking right here on Freedom Friday with Mike Bates in the first 30 minutes, and we're going to talk about it more, that, that the, the SCOTUS gay marriage ruling is absolutely unconstitutional, not because I say so, not because Mike Bates says so, and not because a bunch of Baptist preachers say so, and not because a cr bunch of Christians around the United States say so. It's illegal and unconstitutional because the same five Supreme Court justices who handed it to us last Friday two years ago said... It would be unconstitutional for the SCOTUS, the Supreme Court of the United States, to rule on the definition of marriage that did not belong at the federal level, that belonged at the state level. That was their ruling for throwing out the Defense of Marriage Act, which was a federal law. They said, hey, the feds have no business messing with marriage. Only the states can do that. And then those same justices turned right around two years later and said, you know what? The feds have every right to do it, and we're enforcing it upon all 50 states. So, folks, I will not obey that law. I defy the law based upon the Word of God 
Acts chapter 5, verse 9, uh, uh, Peter and John, uh, Peter and James told the Sanhedrin Council, which was the religious ruling body and political religious ruling body within that culture, sanctioned by the Roman government, they said, you decide yourself whether you're going to follow God's laws or man's laws, but we're following God's laws. I'm following the Word of God. I'm following our Constitution. Our own Supreme Court justices have admitted now that they have ruled unconstitutionally. I'm not going to acknowledge this law. I will not obey it, uphold it, legitimize it, celebrate it, validate it, sanction it, condone it, justify it, endorse it, or support it. It is illegal. I will defy it. Well, apparently there will be there there's there will be no shortage of Episcopalian churches who will gladly marry you if you are interested in marrying someone of your same sex, uh, which uh, you know violates every anatomical natural law there is. Uh, uh, there are plenty of apparently the Episcopalians are fully on board with this, Carl. So you may if they run out of Episcopalian churches in which to get married, uh, until then uh, you may not have anything to fear over there in your Baptist church. I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully not. I don't know. But you know what? Uh, when we were talking about this 30 years ago, when they were trying to normalize this behavior, we, we said, we all said in unison, look, we're, we don't want this because next you'll be after marriage. Oh, no, 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 we won't want marriage. You know, that's a religious institution, yada, yada, yada. And we were proven right. And now we're simply saying, look, next will be the churches. And I don't think that we're not going to have to wait 30 years before the government comes in and says, okay, we're yanking your 501 status unless you agree to marry homosexuals. Yeah, that well, be next. they're already threatening it. In fact, Scalia, right. Justice Scalia said the day after the ruling, he said, this is, you get ready. Well, Justice Roberts said it. Justice Roberts said it. He said, get ready. This is going to mess with tax-exempt status. He said, you just watch. The Supreme right. Court right. judge said that. And that's because he's heard the whispers in the halls of the Supreme Court. Well, you know, Carl, it doesn't matter if you're an atheist, Christian, Buddhist, whatever. If you're driving down the street and the speed limit's 35 miles per hour, and somebody asks you, uh, and, and, and the police pull you over for doing 50, and, and he says, uh, what's the speed limit here? Uh, and you say the speed limit's 35 miles an hour. What are you? You're right, right? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter what religious persuasion you are. <laughs> if, if you say the speed limit's 35 miles an hour, and it is 35 miles an hour, you're right. And back in 1966... John Lennon was asked in a in an interview with a British uh, magazine, um, you know, about his feelings about how things are going uh, in his country, and he said, "Look, you know, we're bigger than Jesus." Yeah, and uh, and this uh, mar remark was not very controversial back in England in the '60s because you know what, he was right. Yeah, and now ever since then we have seen the onslaught of what I call the falling away. You know, this uh, religion of atheism was birthed, essentially, in England, you know, right. with uh, Darwin and, and, uh, and Hitchens and, and Dawkins. Well, Dawkins is uh, not uh, British, but well, he's from a British colony. But anyway, you get my point, right? Yeah. That uh, uh, John Lennon was simply making an observational remark. He wasn't uh, slamming Jesus. In fact, he came out and clarified that later on. We said, look, I wasn't, I wasn't slamming Jesus. He says, I, I rather prefer Jesus. Uh, I was just simply making an observation that we, the Beatles, are bigger than Jesus in the U.K. Right. And you know what? He was right. And because of that, we have seen the rise of atheism in the world. The pseudo-intellectuals have come out of uh, Great Britain with their fancy speech, and they've hoodwinked the world into believing that fish turned into human beings, and there's no need for a god to justify your existence. Right. And uh, so John Lennon was right. The Beatles are bigger than Jesus. And what I'm saying here now is, that disease, that cancer, has infiltrated the world to the point where the, the, the Supreme Court of the United States, you know, the Supreme Court of Canada did this 10 years ago. But Canada has always been a, a country of, of, let's just do things halfway. You know, we're just a halfway kind of country, you know. Uh, we, we, we were able to get ourselves halfway to Afghanistan and had to hitch a ride with the U.S. military to get the rest of the way. You know, we're just a nation of halfway <laughs> I don't sound like a very patriotic Canadian, but uh, like I like I tell Brandon all the time, I'm I'm really an American at heart. You know? Right. Uh, but uh, but uh, uh, listen, uh, the Supreme Court of the United States and Canada, by the way, has essentially said we are bigger than Jesus. Yeah. Because in the first segment, I documented how the, uh, Jesus said, "Look, marriage is between a man and a woman." And he was simply confirming what the Old Testament the scriptures say that marriage is between a man and a woman, and none other. The Supreme Court of the United States, Canada, etc., and more to follow, by the way, are essentially saying what John Lennon said in 1966, simply making an observational comment, we are bigger than Jesus. Jesus may have said this, 
we're bigger. Yeah. What does that tell us? That tell us there's an antichrist spirit that is alive and well, which was birthed in the White House. We're not saying Obama is the antichrist. That person will come, by the way. We're not saying he's it, but we're saying he does have an a clearly has an antichrist spirit, and that antichrist spirit, like a cancerous blob has infiltrated the entire country and has now taken over the Supreme Court of the land. Yep. And that's all we're saying. Yep. And, 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 you know, and that Antichrist spirit, it's like, you know, in, in the Bible, the number three is important. You know, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You know, right? the, the Yahweh existing in, in, in three persons, yet one. Uh, and there's there's that whole Trinity understanding. Uh, we also hear about and and these three bear witness in 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 First John I think it is or Second John I can't remember. It's one of the uh, the short books in the back in John and and it, and it speaks of the threefold witness of God to the to the authority of Jesus Christ. And now, and 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 this was posted on the PNN network today. And now, just one week ago, the day America died. Evolution 1925, we said there is no God. 73, we said Roe v. Wade, there is no God. 2015, we said gay marriage, there is no God. Three witnesses. Mike, that was the day America died.